It's funny going from Mad Max one day to Tomorrowland the next as they're polar opposite films where Mad Max just loves, it relishes the disaster, the destruction, the chaos, the anarchy. Tomorrowland focuses on inspiration and uh, creativity. I loved Mad Max, but Tomorrowland was refreshing as well. I was a little hesitant going into Tomorrowland at first because it has a few things going against it. One, it's got George Clooney, who I normally can't stand in films. Two, it was written by Damon Lindelof, the guy who gave us Lost and Prometheus. So the guy knows how to write a really great, captivating beginning. He kind of keeps the middle a bit of a mystery, and then it falls apart at the end. Thankfully, that's not the case with Tomorrowland. There are plenty of questions asked. Not all of them get answered. Not all of them make sense. That's typical from Damon. But... It still works. I was surprisingly happy with George Clooney's performance though as Frank and I think a lot of that's because we got flashbacks of him when he was a younger child um, and I thought that was actually the strongest part of the film. Had they focused on Frank's story growing up as a kid, learning about Tomorrowland, seeing all the crazy stuff around him, inventing things, that may have been a stronger narrative. It would have been more focused, not as all over the place, which is a standard Damon thing. There's, there's just... The movie's a little over two hours, I think, and the first hour is just, I think it's incredible. It reminded me of The Goonies. Uh, there's a lot of kid actors in it that you don't see in the trailer that are prominent roles, and I'm not going to ruin any of that because I think that some of that mystery should stay intact. The main female protagonist, Britt Robertson, plays Casey Newton in the film. She's very likable. She reminds me of a cross between Julia Roberts and Jennifer Lawrence. There's nothing annoying about any of these characters. She's very strong-willed. She's a free thinker. She's uh, always looking up at the stars, thinking of the answer to things. And that's really the message of the film, and that's what Disney nails here. It encourages kids, it encourages people to be dreamers and to think outside the box and not just complain and ask questions, but to actually answer those questions. It kind of reminds me of Wally a little bit too, because the first half is so strong, and then by the last third, you're just kind of like, all right, we're, in, we're back in cliche territory. We have our villain, we have this struggle. It just would have been nice, especially considering at one point in the film, uh, Britt's character says to George Clooney's character, if you only spent like two or three minutes on the great stuff, now we're going to the gloom and doom, that, that could be said about the script as well. Why focus so much on what we've seen a million times over? Instead, show me more of those diving pools, show me more of the jetpacks, show me more of the hover cars, and all the uh, creative things you see throughout the film. The breakout star of the film is Athena, played by Raffi Cassidy. I can't say anything about her. I don't think she's in any of the trailers. I, I could go back and look, I'm too lazy. She's in quite a bit of the movie too, and she nails it. She's a blast to watch every time she comes on screen. <laughs> I, I honestly can't say much more, because I, I don't want to spoil anything, but she was my favorite part. The biggest praise I can give is this is a Brad Bird movie. So you know going in you're going to get some amazing visuals, you get some great action. This is a guy who's given us a bunch of fantastic Pixar movies in the past, like The Incredibles. Then he moved to some live action stuff like Ghost Protocol, Mission Impossible 4. So there's, our, there's already hope going in that this is going to be a great movie. And I think it is. It is a great movie. There are flaws, but at the end of the day, this is a family film you can take your kids to, sit back and have a blast watching. There is a bit too much monologuing, especially from Hugh Laurie at the end, but the, the pros definitely outweigh the cons here. You're gonna have a great time. And like I said, it kind of harkens back to more of the older school kids movies. And uh, you know, there's just a lot, there's just a lot to like. The other thing I absolutely love is all the Easter eggs that play here. Disney owns a lot of properties. We got the Marvel films, we got Star Wars, so you're gonna see some of this sprinkled throughout and I laugh my ass off at a certain section I'm not gonna give away also. Score time, I'm gonna go with a solid eight. It's a really fun family ride and I think it's worth seeing in theaters just for the spectacle on the big screen.